The Cumberland River stretches nearly 700 miles from Harlan, Kentucky in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains to Smithland, Kentucky where it joins the Ohio River. Along the way it dips into Tennessee, runs through Nashville, and is fed by countless tributaries, large and small. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Nashville District has the job of managing this river system for a variety of purposes. Hi, I'm Bob Snead, Chief of the Water Management Office here in the Nashville District. Let's continue with our journey and explain how we operate the Cumberland River Basin Reservoir System. The management of a reservoir system is certainly more complex than it may appear. There are conflicting demands for water. And in the management of the system, we must balance these demands. And these demands may be related to commercial navigation, production of hydropower, recreation, water quality concerns, and flood damage reduction. Yet at the end of the day, there's no question that the most important project purpose for our system is flood damage reduction. And we always take that into consideration when we make operational decisions. There are two types of projects found in the Cumberland River Basin Reservoir System, and it's important to understand the differences between them. There are 10 projects within the Cumberland River Basin Reservoir System, and they don't all have the same purposes. Nearly all of them, nine of the 10, produce hydropower, but only a select few, for example, have the ability to hold back water during periods of heavy rainfall or have what we would call flood control storage. Navigation is a project purpose along the Cumberland River projects, but not those projects on the tributaries. Let's start by taking a look at a flood storage project. The Nashville District has five of these. We're here at Center Hill Dam in front of the spillway gates. To give you an idea on how much water can be stored at a project like Center Hill, the metal gates behind me are 37 feet high. Following heavy rainfall, water is held back in the lake, and then once water levels downstream start to come down, we'll release the water in a controlled manner. The water does eventually have to be released. We're operating spillway gates at Percy Priest today, and that's because we've accumulated a large volume of water in the lake upstream. In fact, we got to a level only about three feet from the top of the spillway gates on the lake side. In order to regain the storage capacity in Percy Priest to store future heavy rainfall, it's important that we get this water out in a controlled manner, but to bring the level back down as quickly as we can without causing any problems downstream. Barkley Lock and Dam is the most downstream structure on the Cumberland River. While it supports commercial navigation, it also provides a valuable flood control benefit. If you look behind me, you'll see the spillway gates and the room that's available to store water here. Barclays operated collectively with Kentucky Lock and Dam on the Tennessee River. It provides valuable flood control storage for the lower Ohio River and also for the Mississippi River. Next, let's take a look at a run of the river project. These projects are actually on the main stem of the Cumberland River. The locks and dams along the main Cumberland River uh, were authorized by Congress and designed and then built by the Corps, and they provide uh, navigation benefits and hydropower benefits, but we don't have the ability to store water here. For example, we're here at Old Hickory, and if you look here, the spillway gates at Old Hickory, there's only about a two-foot difference between a normal lake level and when water's going to get to the top of the spillway gate. So when water does come up, uh, following heavy rain, there's no option but to open spillway gates and pass water downstream. And, and that's the case uh, really all the way from Cordell Hole Dam, Old Hickory Dam, and Cheatham Dam. It's, it, the story's really the same. Once it gets into those impoundments, into those projects, it's got to come through. So now that we know the differences between the two major types of projects in the Nashville District, let's address some of the difficulties faced by water managers. We already know that the Corps can only store water in its tributary projects, but the rain has to cooperate too. If it falls above or upstream of one of our storage projects, we have the ability to capture that water, to hold it back, and then release it in a controlled manner. But when it falls into a watershed that flows directly into the Cumberland, say anywhere from below Wolf Creek Dam all the way past Clarksville, it's just going to come right into the river in an uncontrolled manner. Think of a flood storage project as a traffic light and the Cumberland River as an interstate highway. 
Cars are temporarily held back at traffic lights until it is safe for them to go. But once those cars get on the interstate, there is no way to stop them. During extreme events, core water managers utilize the flood control capabilities of the tributary projects to reduce the ultimate flood crest and the associated damages along the Cumberland River. When river conditions at Cairo, Illinois, where the Ohio River enters the Mississippi River, reach certain levels, then management of the storage from Lake Barkley and from Kentucky Lake then becomes the responsibility of core water managers at the division office in Cincinnati, Ohio. They coordinate very closely with the National Weather Service and with core water managers responsible for the Mississippi River for a coordinated regional response that provides flood damage reduction benefits not only for the lower Ohio River but also for the Mississippi River. We cannot under all scenarios prevent flooding. We can only reduce its uh, impact and the damage that it causes.